Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the Ontario Soccer Center for our third and final match of Saturday's action in the OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield. You'll be here watching the U17 Boys Final as you'll be seeing Oakville going against West Ottawa in a battle of the OPDL Division Champions and what should be a thrilling match as the players take the field. We'll pause here for some quick announcements and the starting lineups for you guys back at home. Development League. In today's under 17 boys division OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield match, please put your hands together for the away team dressed in black, the West Ottawa Soccer Club. Our home team for this afternoon's contest, dressed in red and white, please welcome the Oakville Soccer Club. And now to introduce the starting lineups for today's OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield match, starting with the away team, West Ottawa Soccer Club. Wearing number one, Max Quackenbush Meddings. Wearing number four, Toby Richardson. Wearing number five, Carlos Gago Sanchez. Wearing number six, Omar Darwish. Wearing number seven, Amadou Kone. Wearing number eight, Leo Franz. Wearing number 10, Casius Mira. Wearing number 11, Kalen Pico. Wearing number 16, Gabriel Nguyen. Wearing seven, number 70, Mohamed Bouzidi. Wearing number 98, Braden Kurkovich. Team assistant coach, Jiheb Bouzidi. Assistant coach, Kwame Telemak. Team head coach, Marco Romozzi. Goalkeeping coach, Sean Edward. And now for the home team, the Oakville Soccer Club, wearing number one, Isaiah Goldson. Wearing number two, Zulfagar Aleph. Wearing number three, Devin Rocco. Wearing number seven, Mohamed Alsawi. Wearing number eight, Emilio Erebit. Wearing number 10, Samuel Contreras. Wearing number 11, Cormac Tracy. Wearing number 14, Nathan Baker. Wearing number 15, Nathan Grabke. Wearing number 17, Thomas Contreras. And wearing number 38, Richard Schwarzkopf. Team assistant coach, Boris Absidis. Team head coach, Charles Ivanov. And now introducing our match officials who were appointed for today's OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield match. Our referee, Mr. Neven Rezeda. Assistant referee, Mr. Daniel Jacob. Assistant referee, Tristan Forey. And this afternoon's fourth official, Vazel Zeke. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please welcome with us today a special guest representing Ontario Soccer, Brian Rosenfeld, Ontario Soccer Director of Soccer Operations. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to recognize this year's under-17 boys division OPDL league champions, West Ottawa Soccer Club and Oakville Soccer Club. I'd like to call upon the team captain from West Ottawa and Oakville to accept the OPDL league champions plate and league champions banner on behalf of the teams and clubs.
Ladies and gentlemen, a big hand for your 2021 OPDL League champions. And now, if you are able, we ask that you please stand for the playing of our national anthem. And it's time now for that boys under 17 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield matchup. As it'll be the West Ottawa dressed in all black going against this Oakville team in red and white. My name is Martin Holmes and I will be giving you the play-by-play -play commentary for this match between these two division champions starting out with the Oakville Soccer Club who did come in with a record of 13 wins and just a single loss on the season. Uh, that was against Rush early in the season. They got through OSU 2 to nothing with Grabke and Gronson picking up the goals in th that match to get them here towards this final. They'll be going against this West Ottawa squad with an identical 13 wins and a single loss. And their single loss was 3 to 2 against that very same OSU squad that Oakville took down last week. But that was at the beginning of the season. They're on a 13-game winning streak and looking to continue that here today. As we get ready with the opening handshakes with the referees who are Niven Rosida. The assistant referees are Daniel Jacob and Tristan Forgey. And the fourth official is Vasil Zeke here as we get ready to get underway shortly at the Ontario Soccer Centre. Launched in 2014 with the 2001 age group, the Ontario Player Development League is Ontario's first and Canada's foremost standards-based youth high-performance league that combines top-level competition with comprehensive high-performance training standards. This innovative and exciting youth high-performance program is an important standard bearer for the adoption of the long-term player development principles across soccer at large in Ontario and Canada. The OPDL encompasses the U13 to U17 age categories for both the males and females, which are delivered by 30 committed license holders from Windsor in the west all the way to Ottawa in the east. Ready to watch two teams who know to, how to find the back of the net. But Oakville is missing their top score of the season. Shapovalov is not dressed here for this match. So they're going to have to look on other players such as Baker and Alwazani to find the goals going against West Ottawa's leading goal scorers are Kone and Buzidi. As they get taken the field, it's West Ottawa in the black. They're going from your right to your left on your screens at home. And in Oakville is in the white and red going from your left to your right. As it looks like we're just going to need a minor change here from the goalkeeper before we get things underway here. Toronto FC is the official founding premier partner of Ontario Soccer, as well as the presenting partner for the Ontario Player Development League, the province's youth high performance league. Their commitment to the game in Ontario is unrivaled. Visit torontofc.com for tickets and more.
Kraken Bush and Madding is just getting the gloves on here. After you have to remove a piece of the clothing, and he's ready to get underway here with the boys' under-17 final, which should definitely be a thrilling match with two high-flying teams. It's the best in the East versus the best in the West, and it's Oakville picking up the ball here early, but a little bit of a stumble there from Arabit, and he's able to recover, but he'll hit the ball all the way towards Kone, who will pick it up here for West Ottawa. Darwish playing that one out wide, and he'll reset it here amongst his defense. As will be Richardson playing it amongst the back line. That pass is intercepted quickly, but Richardson is able to block that through ball before Oakville can go quickly the other way. Goldson just gets that under the jumping boot, and Richardson's going to have to hustle as he's got Tracy all over the back of him and he's forced to play that one out wide and he's able to hit it up towards Pico. Pico is not seeing anything going forward and he's going to start it back with the defense here for West Ottawa as the ball finds way to Gago Sanchez. Nice little one-two with Sanchez and it's Buzidi who drops back from his striker position to support. Chips it forward to Kone. Back to Pico who resets it to Richardson and he'll work it around the field with Sanchez. As under a little bit of pressure is Kirkovic over there in the back line. And that's going to first a turnover and probably a foul there. Yes, it will. And it'll be a free kick for Oakville just around the yellow line. Fran's already getting a talking to from the referee. As it'll be Samuel Contreras stepping up here for the set piece. We have two Contreras, Samuel and Thomas, so we'll probably just call them by their first name here on the field. As Samuel Contreras will lob this one in. It gets punched away by Quackenbush Meddings. Getting in close there was Tracy as he tried to flick that one on. And Oakville will reset this one with Arabit all the way back towards this keeper. That's Isaiah Goldson. Looking for some options. Can't find anyone. He finally finds El Salwi. And he gets it going towards the near side as that ball is played in behind Tracy. And chasing after it now is Grabke. Grabke first time plays that one. No white jersey there. And it's going to get hit as far up the field towards Buzidi. Pico not seeing any. He's going to hit this one all the way back on towards the back line. Kirkovic, under a little bit of pressure, plays it off towards his defensive partner, who's trying to spin away from the oncoming danger. And it's going to be a free kick going in favor of Oakville. And West Ottawa's defense not happy with that one. But it's going to be pretty much... Check out a throw-in, but it's going to be right by the corner flag. As the defense for West Ottawa is hoping for a free kick on a possible foul there. As the play resumes here, as that ball's headed away as far as Pico. He's going to pass it off towards Darwish, who will send it first time up the right side. And here comes West Ottawa with a quick break. Nice speed coming in as they try to center it in for Kone. And they weren't able to complete it, but good recovery. And here comes Buzidi once again. He gets it through. Uh, Goldson, though, will make the save as he gets down low to make the block. It was Sanchez who was making the run all the way from his left back position to join in onto the attack. And he's hustling to get back into position after making that run all the way up the field to try and see if he can help out his attacking force. A good early look there at Mohamed Busidi. Nine goals so far this season. Definitely showcasing some good hustle here early. Draco. Not seeing anything going forward, and he's going to return it amongst the back line. And it goes on the way here to Schwarzkopf. Schwarzkopf trying to play it up through the middle, headed away by Kirkovic. Schwarzkopf once again, he's going to play that one out wide in air a bit. Under a little bit of pressure, trying to get himself away from it. 
And it's a good battle with the ball under the feet. So that's Darwish battling in there with Franz. And Franz will be able to win it back for West Ottawa. Good pressure and hustle coming out from Franz. Sliding challenge there from Sanchez. Gets in the way a little bit and putting up the hands saying they won the throw as Oakville, but the referee will award it to West Ottawa. Pretty calm pace here in these opening five minutes of the game. Play two halves of 45 minutes for a total of 90 minutes. And the game does remain tied after 90 minutes. We go straight towards kicks from the penalty mark, which we've seen a lot of here so far today at the OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield. Nice pressure coming in. And the force of turnover over here for Tracy, who tries a shot. And that will get blocked by Richardson. A lot of the possession so far in what is for West Auto, but due to this high press coming in from Oakville, they're having a lot of issues getting out of their own half. Samuel Contreras. Schwarzkopf. Grab key. Hits it right towards Pico for Ottawa. As he's, nice quick passing there. Finds his way over to Buzidi. He's going to hit this one down the line for Kone. Kone gets him pushed off the ball as he's trying to make a run down the line as Contreras will bring him down and it'll be a free kick just around that edge of the touch line. Players are set up right now for Ottawa towards that far post right now. But it looks like more of a zone marking coming out for Oakville. So they're making sure they're filling in the gaps. As this one gets played in towards that near post. A lot of players are making that run in. But due to that zonal marking, they were able to have that player to be able to head that one away. Knocked up the field. Its ball will find its way for Kone. Kone is battling for it, and he's going to be able to turn around. He gets that ball towards his right foot, and he's going to send this one back. And that's going to be a long shot. That one will get blocked as a West Ottawa squad starting to get a little bit further up the field now. That was Miron who was having a look from distance. Under pressure once again though, these three players on the top for Oakville doing a great job putting a lot of pressure on this West Ottawa defense and they forced a couple of turnovers so far and Kone is able to withstand the ball and he plays that pass right through the legs of the Oakville midfielder as they try to send the ball towards Buzidis who was there on the left side. Buzidi was way open on to goal but they couldn't complete the pass and here comes Oakville the other way it's Richardson going against Tracy shoulder to shoulder Tracy gets it drops it back and he can't find Baker as Oakville had a good chance going the other way good end to end chances on both ends trying to chip it forward can't get it through and It'll be Marone leaves it towards his defender to take up the field as it's going to fall its way towards Oakville. It will have that ball fall into the corner, but it's going to go all the way out for a West Ottawa throw. Probably no, check that. It's going to be an Oakville throw. And West Ottawa seemed a little bit surprised by that, and they're taking their time coming back to defend. As this throw will go backwards. Rako, Schwarzkopf. Baker tries to go for goal, another block, and here comes Buzidi the other way. He's able to shake himself away from Grabke as he's gonna try to continue forward. Nice foot control from Buzidi. He's still going with it, Buzidi. Tries to cut one more time, but that was one cut too many. And a little, almost a little miscommunication on the pass there as the ball fortunately falls back onto the foot of Grabke. And Oakville isn't it, get, turning that ball over in their own end. Go, 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 
Uh, but you're seeing some early looks again at Buzidi there. Some good, good strong cuts, keeping some strong long pacing and some good long strides to continue that ball forward. Dangerous pass up the middle, but Pico is able to retrieve it. It's Darwish. That pass got red, and here comes Oakville the other way as they do another centering pass. Uh, there is a Richardson to slow it down as this one will go all the way back towards the keeper. Pico seems to be that player. He's just I haven't seen him stop running so far, really, here so far in this first half. Constantly just doing one-touch passes and finding himself some space in that central midfield. Osawi was on that forecheck there, guiding close once again for Oakville to force another turnover. But this time West Ottawa was able to reach, withstand that pressure as there's that long ball in which Goldson will take his time. Both these two teams are as well playing for specific charities here in the Charity Shield where the winning team will have a donation go to the charity of their choice. The West Ottawa Soccer Club is playing for the Boys and Girls Club of Ottawa and the Oakville Soccer Club is playing for the YMCA. Really liking the communication so far here from both teams. As the app through bubble and will get knocked aside and be a throw in for Ottawa around midfield. Here's Pete go with it. Gets it off towards this other central midfielder. That's Franz. Franz will be able to play this one out wide. And Kone's making a run. He's asking for that ball, and they try to play it up towards him. And that one got read by Samuel Contreras. Controlled by Kone, right off the throw and Oakville putting a good, some good pressure there and they are able to get the ball as there's a player getting pushed off the ball. The referee, a little bit of a late whistle here, but he will call it and it will be an Oakville free kick. No arguments there from the West Ottawa players. Buzidi, nice control from him, and he gets by the first defender. He's going to try and pass this one up towards Kone. Kone cuts towards the middle, trying to send that one out wide, but it gets cleared aside. Good idea there from Kone. Just couldn't get the execution. Pico gets his pass intercepted and Oakville trying to go the other way, but Richardson is able to recover first and he's going to send Diego Sanchez forward. Buzidi, back for Pico. Pico does a smart decision playing that one out wide as the West Ottawa players will look to reset. Poked away once again, this one is El Sawi. And again, that's got to be very dangerous, even though they're not getting anything with it currently as the Oakville attacking force. Just the potential is always something to keep an eye out for as Goldson comes out of his goal and he's hitting that one up towards midfield. And that one will go all the way out. There's just something you got to be aware of if you're the West Ottawa defense. Can't be playing it too carefully amongst that back line.
of a push there from Buzidi, and the referee recognizes that one as the West Ottawa player tried to push off the defender before making his run down up the field. And the referee noticed that one and called it back for a free kick. A little bit of a sneaky move there from the West Ottawa attacker. Nice job there. The, the ball will be kept in play. As that ball will get played into the middle of the field. Picked up by Buzini. Fires it into the bottom corner. Mohamed Buzini was able to get onto the end of that cross. Skips it by the defender and he fires it into the bottom corner. And West Ottawa takes the early one to nothing lead. But a great job there from the player on the far way side. That was Nguyen. Keeping that ball in play, continuing that run down the line and played in a great cross. And that was just some great hustle in. And in the 16th minute here, it is one to nothing for West Ottawa. As I said, sometimes it just takes one great play. And again, got to give a huge highlight out towards Nguyen over there on that far side. Not only to hustle, to battle for that ball, but keep it in play and continue that run and play a perfect cross. Oakville team has given up less than a goal a game all season long in a little bit of unfamiliar territory here. And we're going to have to see how they respond out here on the field. We've seen some crazy games today. Goal scored immediately right after. Will Oakville be doing the same? They're doing a good job here early with some early passing and possession. Asawi into the middle for Arabit. Good pressure coming out from uh, the midfielder. That's Pico once again, just continuously poking that ball away. As this thrown will go towards the middle of the field. Already seen a couple teams bring out a couple players out for some warm-ups, keeping them fresh. As West Ottawa continues here with the possession. We'll have to see as well. Will either team make a little bit of a tactical switch? West Ottawa with the lead or Oakville down by one. But at this moment, I think it's just too early to make any significant changes. Just continue on the path. Kone does a smart move, recognizes he's surrounded, just hit it off of one of the players and give himself the throw. Handball getting called against Oakville. So Richardson will leave this one for Darwish. Karkovic. Towards Richardson, Sanchez. Kone trying to spin with that ball, can't find anywhere to go, and Oakville can launch an attack the other way as here comes the through ball up, and Richardson has that one hit off his hand. The referee allows advantage to continue on, and it's gonna get cleared aside. Not sure if that was enough of an advantage there, but play will still resume here as that ball bounced and hit the arm of Richardson on that Oakville attack. And there's Buzidi once again, and he's going to burst his way through the two defenders. Buzidi, big save from Goldson as he gets low to his left. What a burst of speed from Mohamed Buzidi. Just split his way through a left on the defensive side. And he got himself a one on one with Isaiah Goldson in goal. And Goldson did well to get down low and make the save. But most importantly, as well, no rebound, which is very difficult from a shot from that range. So big kudos to Goldson there on an impressive save and capture.
Oh, is going to send this one deep down the field and give chase for his attackers. There's a good battle there on the far corner, and Oakville will be com one coming out with it, but it will get poked away at the last second by Darwish, who hits it off of the Oakville attacker and wins his team a throw-in right by their corner flag, and he's going to throw this one in quickly before Oakville can try to contain them, and they do succeed in moving themselves up out of their final third. Good pressure once again. Again, I like this high press pressure coming up from those three-headed attack on the Oakville side. And definitely will prove to be a, prove some damage there if they can keep up with the pace. Of course, plenty of high press, you tie yourself out a much more quicker. As here comes the through ball down the left side for Kone. Touch it back for Sanchez, who tries the shot. And that one will get blocked, and the ball will find its way back towards midfield. Schwarzkopf in towards the middle of the field. First time there from Baker gets blocked. And it's a bit of end-to-end -end gameplay right now. And Buzidi will be called for offside from that through ball opportunity from France. And I'll be brought back for a free kick. But starting to see some the play start to stretch. And Oakville will be making some substitutions out here on the field. And both the options on this near side of the field will be coming off. So a change here with some fresh faces to try and see if they can make an impact in this one. So Baker will be shifting over towards this right side. We got a new striker up top now for Oakville. Also entering the game is Matthew Paris. Call up here for this match. As there's a good battle, which Richardson will be able to find it. And there's Paris trying to win it off of Richardson. He's not able to. And that ball's chipped forward towards Buzidi. Buzidi with two white jerseys on him. Somehow gets that pass between both of them into Kone, but he can't control it as Oakville looks to get the ball out of their own end. There's that fresh leg up top. That's Garanson. Got the, one of the two key goals in their victory in the semifinals against Ottawa South United. Looking to try and see if he can get one to tie this game up for his Oakville team. I left looking for the long ball once again. He's getting it onto the head of Alsawi, but can't get any further as some good control coming in from Franz. Franz tried to play between the legs to get onto Kone, but that got blocked. To be called back here as a couple of substitutions are coming up here for West Ottawa. As Kalen Pico will be one of the players coming up. This was Nguyen. Change in the central midfield and a change in on the right side for West Ottawa. As Kone with a nice little fancy back heel kick. As Buzidi will give chase, but he goes a little bit too aggressively onto the back and he'll get called for a free kick. Long ball up the right side, no one there in a white jersey and West Ottawa will watch this one go all the way out. As Jason Hardo is one of the players who comes into the game. And here's Darwish over to Kirkovic and he's gonna switch it over to the far side. Again, that pressure coming in from Oakville forcing West Ottawa to play that ball long 
And Kone almost got himself set through, but Samuel Contreras is there. Darush. Diego Sanchez. Buzidi gets his ankle taken out from him. Garanson making sure that the West Ottawa striker is okay. As he goes down here. Ontario soccer for values fair play, and we share this common passion with our partners from Respect and Sport, the leading e-learning platform for the prevention of bullying, abuse, harassment, and discrimination. Learn more about their programs and start your respect education journey today at respectgroupinc.com. Bizzetti will be able to get back onto his feet. Looks like maybe a little bit of a twist, and he'll just walk this one off. Comes Richardson on the kick. Good ball from him. It's going to hit off of a back as they're looking for that ball. That was Julian Gonzalez who's there on the right side. He wasn't able to find it, but it gets cleared as far as Kone. And a good foot there from Baker. Pokes it away from the West Ottawa attacker. And he'll force the West Ottawa team backwards. Zaidi looks like he's shaking off of the effects from that challenge. Tries to go forward as Garanson nicely does well to continue his team's possession. Rako with the long ball. He looks to switch it over as it's going to be kept in play over there on the far side of the field as they'll try a first time cross, but that won't trouble the goalkeeper. Quackenbush Meddings goes up for a goal kick, but encouraging play there from the Oakville team. Franz up the field towards Buzidi. All over his back is Contreras, and that's going to be his job. Stick with that West Ottawa striker, and he's able to skip by him. Now looking for some support as he tried to pass that one off towards Gonzalez, and it gets cleared away for a corner kick. In swing here on the corner. It's so interesting here, Gonzalez left footed taker, something to keep an eye out for. As he's going to hit that one towards the far post, three black jerseys were there and none of them were able to control it. And it's going to deflect off one of them and out for a goal kick. Comes another substitution up here for West Ottawa. Looks like Dotan Gorlov has come into the game for West Ottawa. As Oakville looks to move that ball over on the far side of the field. Racco, yes, play that towards the near side. Paris controls. Can't find his man. West Ottawa will get the throw. Little one two right off. And they're gonna bring this one all the way back towards Darwish. He'll play it back towards his keeper. Krakovic trying to get up, but it gets it beaten towards him by a left, and it'll bounce off of his knee and out. And they're gonna try and see if they can capitalize on the left being out of position, but he's able to hustle back and gone get onto the end of that throw in as they'll do a little one two, does Oakville over on the far side. And they'll get the throw in now in towards the West Ottawa half. Looked like that was a little bit of a tee up for a shot from distance there. Gets blocked by Gonzalez. And that ball's going to find its way all the way towards Baker. And Kone's dropped back to support his defense as Baker's going to drive in towards the right corner. Richardson will take a touch as he will hit it right towards Garanson. And there's a sliding challenge. And he missed the ball there, did Sanchez, said the referee. 
The West Ottawa faithful thought that was all ball there. As Granson will get back onto his feet with a free kick here and a great spot to put a cross in. Players are lined up all towards that far post and right away one of the West Ottawa players recognizing that and he's going to try and fill in that gap and towards that near post. Here comes the ball from Grants and headed away by Sanchez. Second ball hit up high in the air, it's still free. And it'll be brought down around the midfield for Paris to hit, try to hit up on the line. He tries two times, but he's not able to hit it up to the line. And West Ottawa will withstand from that pressure and they'll win themselves the throw. Racco does well to slide to keep that one in play. I don't know if he hit it off of his own player, though, to go out. But good hustle there, regardless. Vazidi saying he got a two handed push onto the back of them. It looked like one. Not much of a push, but the two hands were on the back. Off that throw, and as this pass goes in towards the keeper, it's a turnover, and it goes in the goal! And we've been saying how much that pressure on the back line will pay off. And Baker was able to block it and his partner onto the attack was able to put it home. And I believe that's Arabit who is... Emilio Arabit will get the goal. And it's as free as it will come for the player. He started in the central midfield and got moved up to a striker role. And the turnover on the back line with Baker just blocking that clearance on the back pass. And the ball found its way towards Arabin. And that ball will trickle its way into the goal to make this a one-all scoreline. And the boys under 17 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield match at the Ontario Soccer Center. Lots of action still to go on here and what should be a thrilling remainder of this match. Canada Soccer has launched its Return to Play campaign in collaboration with its member associations. The Play campaign is a Canada-wide initiative which serves as the call to action for a safe and responsible return to play for all those involved in the sport of soccer from coast to coast to coast. To learn more, visit canasoccer.com slash play. As we got some hands being called on to the back there of the West Ottawa player. And it'll be a free kick right by the corner flag. And right away the Oakville player is not letting them even want to play this one short. They want to join in right on the attack and continue to how they got their goal. It's a good ball up though off the line. And Kone will try to go down the line. He falls down. The referee, assistant referee waved the flag there. I'm not too sure if it was for a throwing or free kick. It looks like the assistant referee did call it back for that challenge. So it'll be a free kick here for West Ottawa. That's Gonzalez once again here with that left-footed take as you see the players jostling for position in the penalty area. Comes the ball, dangerous one, but Goldson will be able to come out and he's able to get to it and he's going to hit this one up the field first time. Uh, it's too far away from Arabit to be able for him to be able to get to that one and it rolls his way out for a throw. Said we've had two games so far here. Go towards penalty kicks. These two teams are battling it out. Very even affair. Will we be seeing a third? <laughs> Baker is able to get to this one. He's going to hustle on the side. Try to play that one up towards Garanson. 
As it's going to continue to bounce around, there's a slight chance from Arabit. As play will resume here with this ball headed on by Contreras. Shielding going on there. Good job there from Gorlov as he's going to watch this ball go all the way out for a goal kick. Quacker Bush Meddings going to play this one in short. Flicked on, and Paris will be able to get to that one first. Puts it towards a dangerous area, but there's Darwish there, and he'll play this one out wide towards Gorlov. Gorlov's got a lot of space down that line, and he's going to take it. And he plays in this pass behind his players as they try to do a first-time pass up towards Baker. And you're seeing that a lot with Oakville. They're rushing that through ball in. As that's a good idea there for Kone. As this one will hit off of the roof. As he'll shake over the light. And play will resume here with the drop ball. But you're seeing Oakville try to play that through ball in for the attackers a little bit early when they have a little, some, a little bit more space to carry that ball up. But they're seeing it right away and they want to just try to put that West Ottawa defense under a lot of pressure and make them do it without even noticing it as Buzidi tried to go between the two defenders but Contreras was able to block. Ardo, and right to Gorloff, Gonzalez. Gonzalez runs into a left, and he's forced to go backwards. Comes to switch towards the near side for Gago Sanchez. He's got a little bit of time here, and he'll play a little one-two to give himself some more space. As that ball will deflect off their own player. And they still continue it forward here with Kone. Shot there from Gonzalez and Goldson will take out the left hand, taking no chances. Wasn't too sure if that one was going to go wide or not, so he made sure to put the touch on there. And he deflects it aside for another corner kick. Gonzalez once again going for that far post, an open header, takes a couple deflections, and it goes in! Wait, no, no side netting, side netting. Everyone thought that was going in there. Their reaction was questionable. And I think it was just frustrations between Kone, but can't believe he missed it from that range. It looked like the ball was on the back of the net, but it was actually on that side netting. So game resumes here with a one-all scoreline in Oakville. It's going to come the other way now. That was a great corner, though, from Gonzalez headed on. And then it's twice. We've seen two or three players wide open on that far post for an open header. Oakville's got to be keeping an eye on that. Paco. Monroe. Monroe's going to play a ball down to the right side. Great ball from Monroe. On to Baker, who tried to first time it. And he hits it off of the shin pad. And it's going to go out for a goal kick. Buziti got the action started out here early with his 10th goal of the season. And Arabit won a. His lone goals of the season, but most important time for him. As there he is right there, and he gets knocked down. And that's going to be a free kick just on the edge of the penalty area. Darwish putting his hands up saying there was no contact there, but the referee says, nah, I got hit him right in the knee. And it's going to be the goal scorer, Arabit. He's ready to set up and take this one. Four players in the wall for Quackenbush Meddings. Baker, the captain, giving 
His player, an extra reassurance as a fifth player is added to the wall late for West Ottawa. And here comes the drive and great power. Just shooting that one wide, but that was a great hit from Emilio Arabit. It's a seeing eye ball, and I'm not too sure Krakenbush Meddings was expecting that boot. Right now here, just past the 40 minute mark here. One all is the scoreline between these two teams. We're just under five minutes plus stoppage time, which should probably be a minute or two, I imagine, left to go here in this opening half. Shortscoff. On the near side. Looking for some options, playing a little one-two with Baker. But he gets blocked with the ball, will find his way back towards Baker, who finds this man now in the middle of the field. Garanson can't turn around as good job there from Darwish holding his ground. And he's gonna try to lead the attack for it for West Ottawa as they played out wide for Gonzalez. As it was missed there by Thomas Contreras, and that's going to allow Gonzalez, who does a nice little fancy footwork, to try to pass it on towards Kone, but that won't find his man. As Gonzalez stopped his run down the line, as he thought Thomas Contreras was able to get onto that one, as it will be a f free kick in favor of West Ottawa. And it's going to be the first yellow card of the game issued to Oakville. I believe that is the striker Garanson who picked that one up. We'll confirm that later on here, but first booking of the game for the referee Rosetta. Come Gonzalez with the boot, gets the header, and but it goes wide of the goal for a corner kick. So the header deflected off of another Oakville head, and it goes out wide. They've had a lot of success on these set pieces, has this West Ottawa team. Once again, Oakville's got to start figuring out the coverage a little bit more. Interestingly, player right on the keeper in Kone, as Goldson does well to punch that one away. Oakville will clear this one off the field this, towards Arabit, and he collided hard in towards Richardson. Richardson doesn't even look shaken up at all, though, after that collision. As Gorlov tries to play that one down the line, and he's going to throw this one in quickly. Gonzalez can't control that one off the throw. Nice quick passing. Hardo out wide. Grilov as they're trying to play this one forward and they're forced to go all the way back towards Goldson. Who's gonna hit it over towards the left side? Hardo with the control towards Gorlov. Can't play that one up either and it gets clear away as all the way back to Kurgovic who tries to put the pressure right back on instantly and his boot will go all the way out to four throwing as we're getting near towards that 45 minute mark. Today's OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield action is fueled by Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish and refuel during halftime. As we're waiting for one minute here of added time. So just enough time for another attack here for Oakville in this tied game. Monroe.
Played that one out towards the left side, and they try to cross it in. Can't find Baker, but it gets cleared as far as Rocco. Schwarzkopf. Ranson is calling for that one on the far post, and he'll play it towards him. And there's an acrobatic attempt coming there on the far side from Arabit, but he's not able to con to connect on that to bicycle opportunity. Good effort, though, there from the Oakville player, and he's on the ball here, trying to play it up towards Baker as Richardson's just going to send this one high and up the field. Hardell does well to bring that one back down, and he's able to pick up the ball off of that reception. Gets it off towards Gonzalez, who's offside. Doesn't matter regardless, so it'll just be a throw-in for Oakville. And there goes the halftime whistle in the OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield match. The score being West Ottawa 1, Oakville Soccer Club 1. The OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield is all about competing well on the pitch while doing good in the community. Support the team's fundraising efforts and get your shot at winning the jackpot this weekend by buying a ticket for our special Gary Miller Charity Shield 50-50 raffle at www.rafflebox.ca slash raffle slash Ontario Soccer. Ticket sales close at 11.59 p.m. on Sunday, November 7th and the draw is on Monday, November 8th. The winner will be notified shortly thereafter. Thank you for some support. We'll be going towards a halftime break, folks. Don't go anywhere. Second half action coming up next. Gatorade, with electrolytes to help replenish with lost in sweat, carbs to help fuel your working muscles, and fluids to help you hydrate. Scientifically formulated so you never stop competing. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Gatorade. It begins with a ball. Two teams, two nets, that ball, and a love of everything between the lines. But the game is more. The game is you giving every last breath to finish the sprint. The game is that last ounce of strength that pours out of you as you stretch to save your team. The game is questioning yourself over and over again until you find a way forward. Your personal best today is your challenge for tomorrow. Giving everything now is only knowing how much further you can go. The laces we tighten are the ones that bind us together. Entering the huddle as a player and leaving as a team. Play because you love it. Inspire because it's in you. Unite because it's in us. Ontario Soccer.
once I joined the OPDL, my development just went up. Last year I made the Ontario team, so that was super exciting. It's helped me reach my goal of getting to Toronto C. The OPDL has gave me the experience and like the exposure to get into the provincial projects. I mean, without the intense training that I have with my coaching at Oakville, along with Ontario soccer, I don't think I'd be where I am today. The Ontario Player Development League is the standard-based program administrated by Ontario Soccer. It offers the uh, standards in training, competition for athletes between the age of 13 and 17. It puts the best players against the best players in the province every single weekend. Makes you train with the best players around your area, which can only help you develop. The competition in the league is very high. So it gives that challenge for all the players in the league. Coaching is crucial for OPDL. It's the main objective, one of the main objectives for, for, for us in the program. We want coaches to be challenged on a regular basis within the OPDL, not only from a, um, an opposition standpoint, but also from a personal growth and professional development. The coaches have a particular uh, certificate certification. Uh, they're able to bring certain things to the, uh, to the kids that maybe others don't. As well, we have a set curriculum. The focus is more on our development and not just like on games and stuff. So the coaches are really focusing on us and how we develop, which really helps us get better and better. We believe that the same way we, we approach our players, we need to approach our match officials and we need to provide them with platforms to, uh, to be assessed, to be mentored, to be coached and uh, move to the next level. The OPDL is beneficial for both players and match officials because it raises the standard of the game. We're mentored, we're coached, so that we can increase um, our knowledge and our consistency of the match. Unlike any other program in this province, OPDL focus on individual performance plan and the ability for players uh, to move on to the next level. A lot of the time we're always training, we're working hard as a team to get there and individually like as a player, it's helped me a lot with my development. It's good because it trains me and it also like not just teaching me about soccer but also teaches me how to be a better person through like my team and my coach and just the environment I'm around. Being in the OPDL for athletes it's about being in the right environment. As a parent, you always want your child to be in the correct environment for their development. And in soccer, in Ontario, there's no better opportunity, or no better place than OPDL. The OPDL is a pathway for players to be able to excel in a standard-based league. It's player-centered and we feel that this is the best approach to help develop players to, for opportunities at the next level. Playing in the OPDL league has helped me into the, like shaped me into the player I am today because of how high, like how high the intensity is during everything. So every game, every practice, you have to bring 100% to everything that you do, which really helps for uh, going to university because you want to get a starting position, you want to start on the field, play the whole game, so no matter what you do, bring 100%. The opportunities for OPDL athletes can vary. When they move forward from the OPDL, there are many opportunities such as our provincial program in League One Ontario, where our best athletes can graduate to, or national team programs. We have professional soccer, such as like the Toronto FC and their academy program, the new Canadian Premier League, and for the student athlete, there's also Canadian college, youth sports in Canada, and NCAA opportunities in the US. Cherry Shield, like that's a really big thing. The bus teams come together and it gets broadcasted. So that was like a really big part because all the universities that were interested in me watched it and I got lots of offers after that. The OPDL is preparing me by putting me on a pathway to building me up to the provincial team, pushing me towards Toronto FC and potentially the national team. OPDL players become exposed to university opportunities through several programs. We have OPDL on campus. Uh, players can also be scouted through the OPDL scouting weekends. Provincial teams is a great opportunity as well through the projects and competition versus Quebec. University coaches will come and scout the players at these events, as well as national staff and pro academies. So there's lots of opportunities for OPDL players to be uh, scouted at the uh, at the collegiate level. I just think the OPDL has great exposure um, because the quality is so high of the coaches and players. It always entices like university coaches to come out and watch us or national team coaches to come out and watch us. And so I just believe the OPDL has provided the environment for coaches to want to come watch us. Female athletes have a lot of great options playing in the OPDL. 
It's the segue for them to move forward into a national youth teams program. And they would first do that by starting off by trying to make it within the provincial teams program. If they're successful that way, players will be brought into the Ontario Super Centre in, in Markham, where they'll train on a full-time basis and then be known as being our national youth team players from this province that possibly could play into a national excel environment. Male players in the OPDL have similar options as the female. The process usually starts from an OPDL moving to a provincial environment to possibly be scouted by the likes of a TFC Academy at the pro environment or the national teams youth team program. There are opportunities for these athletes. I'm looking forward to becoming a pro and joining TFC is a this step towards going to that. It tries to put you in a more professional environment. Like the competition level is really what pushed me to be who I am now. I believe the OPDL has given me like a good opportunity to play among the best players, be exposed to the best coaches and have just a great training environment. And I just think in comparison to other leagues, the OPDL has just been providing me with the best environment to be able to get me where I am today. The ultimate goal of the high-performance team in Ontario soccer is to assist players as they progress through the talented player pathway. As a senior manager of high performance, my main objective is to provide opportunities for talented players across the And welcome back to the Ontario Soccer Centre here in Vaughan, Ontario for the second half action of this boys under 17 OPDL Gary Miller Charity Shield match between Oakville Soccer Club and West Ottawa Soccer Club. It's evens at ones between these two teams with Buzidi and Arabit scoring the goals for both sides as the teams have taken the fields and switched sides. So we are underway with the second half with Oakville Soccer Club in the white and red. They'll be going from your right to your left on your screens at home. And in the all black is West Ottawa going from your left to your right. We'll keep an eye on a couple of the changes out here on the field. As we already see a couple changes out here to start out this second half, so we'll keep you informed of that as we are underway here. As Gonzalez is going to try to get onto that one, but he gets that one slid away from him from the Oakville midfield. And it's an early throw in here for West Ottawa. So West Ottawa team is playing for the Boys and Girls Club of Ottawa here. And Oakville Soccer Club will be playing for YMCA as they hope to try and and pick out the victory here between the two division champions with identical 13 wins, zero draws, and one loss in this OPDL season. And there's a turnover picked up. And once again, we've been talking about how critical those turnovers were as Gronson can't find any of his players as it's going to be settled in here for Gonzalez. He's going to try and chip it forward, but it gets cleared away by a left. Pico, he's back on the field. We saw a lot of hustle coming out from him. As Darwish brings this one all the way back towards defense as Richardson will play that one out wide and he'll get the return right back from Sanchez. A little back and forth on both sides. And coming way out of his goal is the keeper, Quack and Bozier Meddings. But the defender taking no chances. There was a Darwish taking no chances. He was just going to clear it away. Thank you to Ontario soccer partner, Soccer Express, for their first class support. As Canada's premier soccer apparel and equipment dealer, Soccer Express is everything needed to take your game to the next level. Visit SoccerX.com to check out the latest gear from Adidas, Nike, Puma, Admiral, and more. As Oakville tries to play a three ball up the middle of the field. As Garrison does a good job there, but it just gets slid on the last second. Salvadori. He's checked into the game in the second half. He tried to move that ball forward. As we have another new player running onto this one. Starts Atakis. He's going to play it across to the far post. There's the header and couldn't direct it onto goal. Great ball from Starts Atakis, making his first contribution onto this game.
Gonzalez seen strong on the left foot. And he's going to play that one pass inside towards Hardo. Hardo is the Leaves this one now for Nguyen. Hardo was the player who just had that chance as they try to play it towards him once again. As Samuel Contreras is there this time and he'll clear the side for a corner kick. And you're right now, if I'm a Oakville defender, every time Gonzalez gets on the ball, I am not letting him cut towards his left foot. They continuously let him get towards that favored left foot and he's been able to send some good balls because of that. As he's gonna loop this one in, headed away as giving chases. No, and he's just gonna let this one roll out and let his team move up to take this throw so he can get back to his position. Ardo able to force his way through one player, can't get through the second, but Oakville can't. Looked like it was gonna be a West Ottawa throw, but 